Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16.2 has been out as far as the release candidate to both developers and public beta testers for the past few days. This should be the final version released to the public probably next week. We'll talk more about that in a little bit, but with iOS 16.2 RC, it gives us a preview of what to expect as far as features and overall experience. So there's more features to talk about. There's also the overall experience, battery life and more, and not just my experience, but your experience based off the YouTube community poll, where at the time of this video, there's about 7,000 votes and over 100 comments. I've looked and read all of the comments to take a look at what it's like for most people. So we'll talk about that, but let's first talk about the overall feature updates. Now, Apple music sing is something that we saw just this week with new lyrics that we can follow along, adjust the vocals and more, but sometimes we're actually not seeing it follow along. And so with this song, you'll see, it doesn't follow along to the actual lyrics but you can listen to it and it's different on certain tracks. Not all tracks are updated. And I know a lot of people had been asking me about that. It goes back to the iPhone 11. You can actually use it on here. And if you have a more mainstream song, so if we go into Apple music, you'll see here, this is Pearl jams, even flow. I used this in the initial iOS 16.2 is out video or RC is out video. And you'll see it's actually following along with the lyrics. Now there's also something new worth mentioning here is if you tap the three dots in the upper right, you can report a concern as far as lyrics being incorrect. Lyrics aren't in sync with the audio. My concern isn't listed at real time. Lyrics are unavailable and audio issues while using vocal controls. So those are some new things that have been updated with this RC version. Some people saw the report concerns before, but it looks like they've changed a little bit. Now, the next thing has to do with AirPods that's been updated. So if you have AirPods, go ahead and open these up here and connect them to my iPhone. And let me bring in another iPhone with the AirPods set aside on the left. I have beta four of iOS 16.2. And then I have RC on the right. If we go into our AirPods options here, you'll see if I scroll down, I now have an option for end call. I don't have it on beta four, even though we're looking at the same AirPods. So there's an option for end call. And if you go into that, you have the option for press once or press twice. So it appears that's something that's a little bit new in this update. I don't have it anywhere else with beta four, just the RC or release candidate. If we go into the app store here under discover, if we're in the search category, many people are seeing discover have multiple columns. I'm not seeing this and I wasn't able to duplicate it on any of my devices, but I have seen it online where there's multiple columns for some, if you're having that, let me know in the comments below. Now also under advanced security protection that can be found under settings, tap your name and then go to iCloud. If you go to turn this on and you're on a brand new phone, it may not let you enable it due to it not being in use long enough. Some people are seeing a message that delays it for a month or so before they can enable this just to protect their overall account and device information. So that's something some people are seeing. I'm not sure if it's an error or if it's just sort of a security measure, but many people have been seeing that. Also, if you go to turn it on, we'll go ahead and wait for it to turn on. I set up a backup person. You'll see here, it says update your devices. I actually have to update all of these devices before I can actually use them. So that's something that I'll have to either remove them from the account or update all of these once the final update is out so that I can use the full advanced security update feature. So that's something I can't actually do until those are updated. It's just something that's a little bit different that I noticed when I went to actually set it up myself. So I may remove a bunch of those devices from my account, put them on a separate account and then enable this, or I'll have to wait for the final version to come out. Now, if we go under settings, go to general, and then we go to airdrop, airdrop everyone for 10 minutes is something that's been a bit controversial. That's definitely releasing with iOS 16.2, but I would love to see an additional option. So I just wanted to see what you had to say about that. I did mention it in the what's new video or the iOS 16.2 RC is out video, but that's just something that I would love to see changed. It's great that it can keep it a little bit more secure, but I would like the option to have the same options as before. Also, one thing I wanted to mention is I have confirmed that 5G for India is in iOS 16.2 RC and should be in the final release. So for those of you in India that are waiting for 5G on your supported iPhone, that should be coming very, very soon. There's still features we don't have yet. 
and one of those is Apple Music Classical. That's something we've been waiting for, and we do have classical music as an option within Apple Music, so I'm surprised maybe we just don't have a new classical music section, or maybe we'll have an all-new app altogether. It looked like it was going to be a completely new app, and so far we haven't seen that. We're also waiting for dark wallpapers to make a reappearance. That's something that we've wanted for a long time. And if we go into settings, go down to wallpaper on iOS 15, you have dark appearance dims wallpaper. This is something we want to be brought back. It's not in iOS 16.2. So if we go back and we go to wallpaper here under wallpaper, if we want to add a new one, here, if we scroll down, there's no option to make it a dark mode wallpaper. That's something a lot of people have been asking for. I don't think they're bringing it back, but at this point, we don't really know, but hopefully we'll see it in the future. Also, we don't have dark mode in Freeform. The new Freeform app does not have a dark mode for whatever reason. This is what I used for the demo in the previous video, and it works well, but there's just no dark mode for it. So hopefully we'll see that in future updates. Emergency SOS via satellite appears to be launching on December 13th for the UK, according to sources at Mac Rumors, or at least sometime next week. That's available for the iPhone 14 series and 14 Pro series devices and something that you'll be able to find under emergency SOS in your settings. Apple pushed this in the background and it just turned on all of a sudden at around noon the day it launched. So you could see that in the UK and maybe other places as well. Whether or not that's the same day we'll actually see iOS 16.2 though, we don't know. Also, one thing I wanted to mention is iOS 15.7.2 RC came out at the same time as 16.2 RC. I was able to downgrade my iPhone 8 Plus from iOS 16.2 betas to iOS 15.7.2 using the file, the IPSW file. And you'll see here, if we go to settings, you can see that already from the wallpaper, but if we go to general, then about, you can see that it's build number 19H218. I'm on 15.7.2 on the iPhone 8 Plus. Plus. It looks like it's being signed. I had to restore it. I couldn't update back to it. I had to fully wipe and restore the phone, but it appears to be working. So if you wanted to downgrade and you're a developer, it looks like you can do that. At least on the eight plus, it should work on other phones that originally had iOS 15 on them, the iPhone 13 and older. I don't expect it to work on the 14 though, since it came with iOS 16 installed. Now, also one thing I wanted to mention is security updates because security updates we still haven't heard much about since iOS 16.1.2. Apple released that to the public along with tvOS 16.1.1 and we still don't know what's in them. If I refresh this website, it's still not up to date. So we should see these updates, what's contained within them, and also iOS 16.2 updates, hopefully the day it releases, and then we'll know what's in this. So I would probably think it's going to be worth upgrading, and there's probably a reason they haven't updated this yet, and it still says details available soon. Hopefully we see that soon. Also, one thing I wanted to mention is in the Apple Store, if you go in the Apple Store app or your Apple website in your country, the HomePod mini is now available in Sweden, Finland, and Norway. So if you've been waiting for one of those, they should be available for you now. For some reason they weren't available there, they should be available now. Now, as far as overall bugs that they've fixed, well, up until now, the swipe home bug seems to be fixed. So if I go in and play a song, let it play, swipe home, it goes right up into the dynamic island. It seems to be nice and fast, although that animation stuttered a little bit. So I'm not sure why that's happening. Some people are seeing a difference depending on what device they're using. Overall though, that's the first time I've seen that. So again, if we close out of music, we go back in, let's wait for it. We'll hit play, swipe home, and it goes to the dynamic island and it seems to work. So it looks like it's fairly smooth. I have not had to reboot the phone since to actually get that to be smooth again. So that's an improvement, but there was a little bit of stutter there. Also, the camera bug does not appear to be fixed. The camera bug that more and more people are bringing to my attention is if we look at the photo here, snap a photo, then it processes it after the fact, it actually looks a little bit different and maybe a little bit darker. Many people don't prefer the overall look. This bug seems to be there still and we're waiting for Apple to resolve it and hopefully maybe address it. But you'll see here again, if I take a picture, we'll take that photo, go into the photo, it sort of processes it and makes things a little bit darker. Many people have been complaining to me about this, that this seems to be there still. So hopefully we'll see an improvement maybe with iOS 16.3. 
Also the YouTube rotation bug seems to still be there. So if we go into YouTube, it's reloading on my channel. If I play this video and we'll just rotate, it seems to be a little bit stuttery as I rotate. That's what I'm experiencing. You can see it reproduced over and over and also Ram management doesn't seem to be great. So there's some issues with it sort of restarting the apps over and over. And there's definitely some issues still with it. Also that AirPods case bug seems to be there still where people actually have these connected. They're listening to music and then the battery level is actually showing that the case is empty. I'm not finding this for myself. And if I remove this here, let's see if it'll show the case. I'm not sure that it will since I have a bunch of other things here, but people are seeing the case report back as zero battery life. I actually haven't seen that myself, but quite a few people I know have. Now, as far as overall performance, I showed you that a little bit where it seemed to be pretty good on the 14 Pro Max with the exception of it sort of pressing on the dynamic island and stuttering a little bit, but overall performance seems to be pretty good. However, going back to iOS 15.7, it definitely seems to be smoother and more fluid regularly. Going into music, I haven't once opened music on this since restoring it. You saw how quick it opened. If we go over maybe to weather, let's see what we've got here. It loads and then it says hydrologic outlook. So it's working pretty well. I really have no complaints with the previous version. Of course, with iOS 16, hopefully Apple gets this right and really smooths things out. I'm not really sure why it's doing that. So hopefully that improves very quickly. As far as overall heat, well, the phone doesn't seem to be getting very warm with the exception of maybe running intensive tasks. So let me show you the thermal camera once again. Now, if we bring in the thermal camera, you can see here that we've got up to about a little over 87 degrees Fahrenheit. If we switch it over to Celsius, it's Celsius in the hottest area here. You'll see we hit 32 degrees Celsius in one spot, but I'm seeing it mostly around 31.5 or so. So in general, it's staying fairly cool for me and it's cool to the touch, but just something I wanted to mention as many of you seemed concerned about that. It's staying nice and cool. Of course, if you have a case on it, that's fully enclosing it and it's getting really hot, you may want to consider removing that for a little while. Now, as far as overall battery life, I'll share my battery life and then we'll share someone else's that's using a different phone, but you'll see here battery health is at 100%. And you can see the overall battery cycles here, as many of you have asked for that. So that's how many times you've charged to 100% and then back down to zero, or maybe 50 and back down to zero twice, any combination of 100%. And so it's doing pretty well on a newer phone. And if we go back to yesterday, I had two hours and 56 minutes of screen active time, two hours and 41 minutes of screen idle time and used a little over 50 or 55% of my battery. That's not really that great. And today though, I'm getting a little bit better result at three hours and five minutes. Again, I'm seeing this a lot with home and lock screen. If you've been following along, maybe after the final version comes out, I'll wipe the phone and see if it helps at all, or really try and optimize everything as it seems to be using a lot of power with the home and lock screen. And I even have the wallpaper off, so it doesn't seem to be making much of a difference there. As far as someone else's battery life, we'll go into Instagram where he actually sent in his battery life. This is from Abishek on an 11 pro max with 95% battery health. And you'll see he had six hours and 24 minutes of screen on time and used about 75% of his battery. I have seen him get better battery life than this before, and hopefully it continues to improve, but it's not terrible. I just really hope it improves over iOS 16 and any previous versions. But again, it takes a few days and sometimes more than that to actually know for sure as it sort of settles in. Typically the first day will be the worst though. As far as overall release dates, well, iOS 16.2, iPadOS 16.2, macOS 13.1 Ventura, watchOS 9.2, tvOS and HomePodOS 16.2, and iOS 15.7.2 and iPadOS 15.7.2 are all expected next week on the 12th or 13th. We don't know 100% until Apple actually comes out with the updates or tells someone, but it looks like usually it's on a Monday or a Tuesday. Lately, it's been on a Monday for major releases. So I would expect it then, although again, it could be Tuesday, but either way, very early next week, we should have all of those different updates. And if you're wondering if you should install the update, well, for the security updates alone, I definitely would, especially on an older version, such as iOS 15.7.1 or earlier. However, if you're on iOS 16, I would definitely update thanks to the new features with always on display. If you have an iPhone 14 pro or pro max or the new free app or many of the different changes with live activities. So I would definitely recommend installing that.
As far as the next update, iOS 16.3 beta one, typically every year, as we get closer to the end of the year, around the holidays, Christmas, New Year's, all of those things, we typically have a release of a beta and we could probably expect that sometime this coming week. And that will be the last beta until probably the second week of January or so, or maybe even later. That's typically what we see with Apple. So we'll have iOS 16.3 beta one, probably later next week, and that will be it until probably after the new year. So unless Apple changes it up, that's what we can expect. Now let's read a few of your comments. Alec Tech says, overall it is good on my 13 Pro, but the battery widget keeps showing the case is not charged and the disappearing keyboard bug is still present. Other than that, it is stable and snappy. ProMotion feels better than on previous versions. Sanway Souza says, and hopefully I'm saying that properly, running iOS 16.2 RC on my iPhone 10, surprisingly still a lot buggy for me with widget glitches, glitches on the lock screen and occasional app crashes. Kieran says 16.2 iPhone 11, 89% battery health, still facing the animation and scrolling hitches I've been seeing since iOS 14 in apps like Twitter, YouTube, Discord, and other OS menus. Although they've been greatly reduced, they just come back after a few days. Battery life is not as good as beta one through three, but it's better than 16.1. Justin says iOS 16.2 RC seems pretty smooth and I haven't really experienced many bugs, but battery life is absolutely terrible on my 14 pro max. So that's everything with iOS 16.2 RC and whether or not it's ready. Well, if you base that off battery life, I'd probably say they could fix some of that or optimize it more. However, it's hard to say since it's only been out a few days and it's hard to say when those who are having bad battery actually installed it as it can take a couple days to sort of improve with different processing in the background and indexing. But I'd love to hear your overall experience with iOS 16.2 RC. And if you think it's ready for public release coming this week, and let me know your overall thoughts of iOS 16 versus iOS 15. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. I'm looking forward to seeing new features that Apple might have with iOS 16.3 and hopefully a redesign with iOS 17. I'm really hoping Apple does something different with their icons as it's been a very long time since they changed anything, but let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.